Hi chaps, um, Nitro Fingers here again, um, doing a, a new video that's a little bit different today. I'm actually showing off um, a new feature that's in the current public beta of ComputerCraft, um, and that's gold computers. So, I want to sort of, this is not quite finished, and the features here are by no, no means complete, this may, may, well, may change over time, um, but I'm very keen to show off these features because there's a lot of stuff I'm very excited about with this mod, so I'm going to be doing that today. Alright, so you can see here that we now have these gold computers. You can also create gold monitors, but I haven't got any of those at the moment. And the way these are created is exactly the same as a regular computer, but with gold bars instead of um, stone. So they're much more expensive to make, but when you use them, you'll probably understand why. So let's just fire one up and see what happens. So there are two big new things that have appeared in this version. First and foremost, there's colour, which is really nice. We can now change the foreground and the background text colours as we want to. And the second big thing is mouse support. We can now click on the screen and it'll actually tell us where we are. So let's make a program just very quickly to show off these features. Um, so... I'll just call this clicker, I guess. All right, um, so all the features to do with changing colors are in the term library and the colors, sorry, the term API and the color API. So we can set the background color and the text color by going term.set background color to uh, a color in the colors API. Um, so they're exactly the same as the ones in the red power API. So we can go for um, colors.orange, which would be good. Term.set text color to colors.red. There we are, for example is fine. Um, and then we can sort of, yeah, do that to, to, to print things. And that'll change colors as, as we see fit. Now, um, the operating system you see here is it's constantly changing the text color back and forth, and this, is the, this isn't going to stick. Um, so we have to, yeah, this will, this will change once we've finished, but the background color doesn't usually change, so this will stay as orange when we, when we finish our application. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, and show off the mouse event next. And now mouse events uh, work the same way as keyboard events. Um, we pull the click event, so we're going to go local x, y is equal to, sorry, it's going to be underscore x, y is equal to os oh, pull event click, like that. Now, um, there are three parameters, four parameters returned, rather, in terms of a click event. Um, this, of course, is the ID, so it would just be click is text. Um, the x and the y is the x and y coordinates of the screen, so you can go from 0 to 52 and 0 to 19, sorry, 1 to 51 to 19 for the x and y for this screen in particular. The third event is also the mouse button, so you can check the left key for 1, the right key for 2, and the middle mouse button for 3. But I won't be doing that, I'm just going to pick any key I want to. Um, I'm just going to go, and because this maps it directly to um, where the cursor is on the screen, we can then just go term set cursor pause to x comma y, and that'll work perfectly well. Wherever you click will then be the position that you've then displayed. So that's a nice easy way of just doing that. And I'm just going to go text utils dot slow print hello colored world. There we go. And then I'm just going to go colors dot black so it doesn't stay as orange because that'll be a bit messy and then just um, clear would be fine as well. Alright, um, now the thing is that whenever that's set, because the background color hasn't changed, if you run things like clear um, or turn dot clear, that will just change the whole screen to that color, which orange might be a little bit garish, so we won't do that. Um, so let's just see this in action. We're just, just going to clicker like that and then we're just going to click somewhere on the screen. Ah, oh, okay, and that's not a thing apparently. Shame. Um, so, but pretty close anyway, and you can see that we now have this orange colour that's everywhere, so that's a bit messy. Um, anyway, so that's that's essentially the, the way that that's going to work, which is nice and easy. Let's just go on to paint now. Um, so, I'm really excited about this model because there's a lot of cool things that we can do with it, and I've made two applications um, to begin with, just to, sh to show off some of the original features, and then we'll talk a bit more about how they can be used for some really fun stuff later on down the track. So the first thing I've created is mPaint, and this is just a very simple application um, for painting. So we're just going to go... Just, uh, high. Let's call it high. Alright, All right, so this is essentially what mPaint looks like um, as an application that I've as I say, I've wrote. It's pretty basic, as you can see here. So um, these are all the colors um, down the screen. These are all the colors available to you on the screen. So you can see there are 16 in total, ranging from white to black, which are there as well. And then we just have a little palette down here and our delete key, which we won't be using, and the menu here as well. So we can just paint by just clicking on the color you want, just painting. The colors, incidentally, they're... Um, 
Let's go up like they're um they're, ju they're just numbers um if you if you're interested in them they're essentially just the powers of two so if you go from two to the zero up to two to the fifteen each one represents a color so white as you see is two to the zero which is of course just one and then down there which is almost thirty one thousand or something is um two to the fifteen so I'm not much of an artist it's kind of weird I'm working with these art tools because I am um, not great with them but yeah. Now, you can see here that the mouse event is just for clicking. You can't drag at the moment yet. That may change, um, so I don't know if that's going to stay the case or not, but for the moment you can't, which is just a... Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, that's alright. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's just... There we go. That's looking smart. Let's just type it together. Alright, that'll do. Um, nice, simple image. We can maybe get rid of that bit there and that bit there. A bit more enclosed. Yeah, cool. Um, when you're editing these things, just be wary that even though the um, the pixels sort of, I mean, you can see they're about twice as tall as they are wide, um, but that does change. If you have a pixel, for example, near the side of the screen, it will actually be slightly longer than um, a standard pixel. In addition to that, the, the ones near the top of the screen are slightly taller, so just be aware of that. That's a, it's a, it's a bit of a a bit of a sort of catch to watch out for there as well. And these are very odd. I think they're like twice the size or something. Um, so that's just something to be wary of. We'll just clear that out with some white there. There we go. Cool. All right. Nice simple pictures. Um, you can do now. I'll just show you what they look like in an editor. So they create this thing here, and we've just created they called hide or NFP. So we just go edit hide or NFP. Um, the file extension there just means paint. I just use the file extension to keep things safe. You can edit text files. It won't break the application, but it'll look stupid. So don't um, just use this face here, and um, you can see the file format here. Although I've I've given it my own extension, in reality it's one that's being used quite regularly around the forums. It'll probably have its own name later on down the track. So um, I, I do not by any means lay claim to it because it, it wasn't mine. Um, and you can see here that it just draws some letters and um, and numbers, and the values here essentially it just corresponds to hexadecimal values for those powers I spoke of beforehand. So. Um, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, which represents white. 2 to the power of 15 is black. 2 to the power of 4 is uh, yellow. So on and so forth. So it's it's I mean it's just a very simple way of just sort of keeping track of what color is what and mapping directly to the colors API um, very easily. So I mean you can make modifications here as well if you really want to. I don't know why you would though. So I'm not going to. Um, but that's it as well. So we can just yeah just make modifications as we see fit. So yeah um it's pretty simple stuff really. Not especially complicated. It's not really designed to be complicated, <laughs> which is which is fine. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's working quite nicely. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So this is just fine for just drawing some nice simple pictures. And I've seen some really cool things come out already. Um, someone on one of the forums used this tool to create like a picture of um, Super Mario, which I thought was really cool. So uh, you can do that with these, this this color palette, um, which is really nice. However, I'm really interested in this not just for doodling. Um, but I actually want to make this for making sprites for video games. And this tool, which is just a very simple painting tool, is not going to cut the mustard for that job. We need something a bit fancier. Um, there's a few things that we have to worry about, and I'll talk about those issues um, uh, by looking at the other tool that I wrote, which is mPaint Pro for more complicated tools. So I'll just open up mPaint Pro with our hide or NFP file. And we can see some of the problems right off the bat. Um, so first and foremost, two, two big things you can see have, have gone wrong here, and this talks about the, the, one of the major issues. My shadow is now invisible. This uses um, a black canvas rather than a white one as the previous vid video, so um, the previous application rather. So these white pixels here um, that I used to just delete the other pixels that were invisible on the canvas are now vastly visible, and the stuff that was visible before is now invisible, so I actually don't know what's there, even though it actually is. If you go back and look at the image... You can see that there's some... Um, things here that have no letter whatsoever, they're just empty, and there are other ones that actually have numbers, and these zeros here represent, um, represent white, so you can see there's a bit of white at the ends here, and there's some white in that corner there, um, and that's all good. If this were an actual video game, um, and I had created that sprite in mPaint, um, and I had that, then you'd have sort of, um, if, if the background was changing colour, for example, then you'd have those white squares just sort of sitting there, standing out, looking pretty stupid. Not going to do. Um, so we need to have um, this this background here, this stuff that has no colour, as being visible to us for some way or another. Um, in editing programs, it's typically referred to as the alpha channel. This is the, the colour channel that essentially has no colour. It is, it, it's colourless. So that way it works in transparency. So if um, I paint one of these colourless tiles onto another sprite, it will just be the colour of the sprite that I drew beforehand. Nothing will change. And, and that's something that we, is really important with image um, editing and, and with image displaying, because if we have those colours being available to us, um, sort of displaying in a way that we don't want them to, um, then 
otherwise you've got some sort of ugly thing happening. So the question is, how on earth do I know what the transparency is? In most applications you have like a checkered grey and dark grey sort of um, background to let you know what's in alpha and what isn't, but we can't do that because of the lack of pixels and the lack of colours. So the way I've solved this problem is by having the alpha channel being customizable, and you can change it whenever you want to to whatever colour you want to. So in this instance here I can just choose a colour like pink for example and just hit the Q button and then the alpha channel will then be set to pink. So everything that is null on the screen is now displaying as pink. This includes pink tiles, so if there are some pink tiles here, they will be, um, they will still be displayed as pink, but it also means that we can, um, but yeah, it means that we can distinguish between them and other null tiles. So if you just switch between two different colours, um, using the Q and W keys on, on my keyboard, it can just help you know what colours transparent what aren't. So where that little editing would be absolutely invisible to us on our regular screen, now we can say, ah, we've got to get rid of that. So we use the delete tool here, which is that little black tool, and we can just clear those away. And what you'll see now, get rid of the pink too, is that when we change back to our white canvas, it's still not visible, but they're not there either. So we now know that those are now a transparent colors. And if you went back to edit it, you'd see that the, the zeros were gone too. So um, that's nice and easy for editing too. So, all right. Um, so that's the first big thing, is to make sure that we have transparency and working correctly with our picture. What else can we do with this tool? Um, well, it's possible that you might want to create a picture that's bigger than this actual screen is, so we can scroll. So you just use the arrow keys, and you can just sort of move the picture around, really, um, and sort of look at different parts of it. Think of your computer as like a giant window that's looking at... Sorry, it's, a, it's like a magnifying glass that's looking at a giant piece of paper, and you can just sort of move the magnifying glass with the arrow keys to look at different parts, which is fine. You can't move past the top left corner, though. That is um, the origin, and it can't go any further than that, so yeah, just be aware of that. Uh, what else can we do? Um, suppose that your picture here is, you don't like it there, you actually want it to a different part of the canvas, and that's important too, because, um, for example, if this were a video game and I wanted to draw the whole sprite, it would always draw there, but what if I wanted to draw from the top left corner, then if I sort of drew, wanted to draw it there, it would actually draw over there-ish somewhere, which is no good, so we can move the picture um, by hitting the M key to change it to move mode, and we can then just, yeah, move it around. Using arrow keys, you can click as well if you want to, and that'll just move to the top left corner, so if just click it there, that would be where, probably where you want it to be um, if you're editing program. You can see that little stretching was a bit silly there, but besides that, it's not a real big deal. I'm going to put that in the center of the screen for my little animation for later. Um, that'll do for now. And what else can we do? We can pipette. So hit the P key to pipette. Um, this is a bit broken. I apologize. This is all very alpha -y. I'm doing this on the fly quite quickly. But we can just detect colors fairly easily just by clicking. We can use the right key as well. There we go. So, very easy, very simple stuff. Um, just for detecting and changing colours. Then, of course, go to the palette and you just turn pet mode off when you're done. So we'll just save that. Um, and that's looking pretty good. So now we can create some very simple sprites that are transparent and we can sort of move them around and put them in good positions. So we have enough tools now to be able to make an image um, that would be suitable for video games. Even if it wouldn't be very easy to make with these tools, they would at least be possible, which is, which is really good. Um, but that's only half the story, because I suppose the big thing with um, with video games is that they're not just flat images. If you look at like my character in Minecraft, for example, he's not just static. You know, he moves around. His legs move. He can jump. I actually think this is the only animation I have in Minecraft. I think just turning my head and walking around. But it's still an animation. Still still counts as an animation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good if we have animation support for application as well. So, that's also included in mPaint Pro. Um, these NFP files are paint files, but the NFA file here is an animation file. So we can convert NFPs to NFAs very easily. We just go mPaint Pro A, that'll just convert it to an animation file. NFP here. And just ask if we want to convert it. I'm going to say yes. And now we're working with the animation editor, which is different to the regular editor, and there's a few ways this is different. Um, that you might be able to see just off the bat, which is blue for the transparency. So first off, you can see here that we have the frame being displayed here as well. And this is, of course, referring to the um, the animation frame that we're looking at. This is uh, animation in this application works very much the same way as rotoscoping did um, back in the days of hand-drawn cartoons. So essentially, you just put one layer on top of the other and just cycle between. There's no lerping. There's no um, uh, you know dependencies. That there's nothing like that. It's all just it's all just sort of one image to the next. Uh, you can see there's only one frame in this particular animation, so we can change between them. There's a few different ways we can do that. Um, we can use these little arrow keys here to move between frames, like that. Alternatively, we can use um, the go-to key. Let's so just hit G, and that'll just take us to frame 2, for example, which is fine. Um, and we can use number keys as well, so we can go, like, click on frame 4, 
and that'll take us to frame 4. You can see that whenever we move to a frame that doesn't exist, it just creates them and fills in the gaps, um, and the picture that we fill in is always the same as the picture that we're looking at. So if I were to change this picture, so it look like this for example, and I were to go to frame 5, it would look exactly the same as that one, whereas frame 4 would be without that stuff there as well. Um, if you don't want that many frames, you can always remove them. You can just hit the R key, and it'll remove everything after the current frame, so that's going to remove frame 2 to 5, and back to one frame again. Let's just add three frames in this application. And let's just do some simple stuff here. So I might change the color here to purple. Um, good. And let's change this color to green. So now, if you just imagine this is animated, we would just be flipping between colors like that. So it's a pretty boring animation, but uh, it is an animation. Can't can't deny that. I suppose I want to make a change to the whole image as opposed to just modifying individual frames. It would mean I have to go through each frame and make the change automatically, which would be very painstaking. Um, so I've included a record tool like this, and the record tool allows us to make modifications to the image gestaltly. So if I want to add, for example, uh, something like this. Please don't judge my artwork. I'm just awful. But anyway, um, if we do that, then you'll see that that smiley face was drawn everywhere, which is really nice. So now we have that, that sort of thing there as well. Um, and if you want to watch your animation play, you can just hit the spacebar and it will play through um, each frame. You can speed up and slow it down with the arrow keys too. So that's going to speed it up. That's just going to slow it down. There you go. So, very easy. Um, and that's some sort of animations working as, as they do. Not much to it, really, um, as far as that. You can still do things like moving, and um, you can clear frames too, so if you're in record mode, for example, and you want to remove everything, you can just hit the clear all frames button, otherwise you just turn off record mode and just delete the current frame, which is there too, so you can do that. don't know if there are any other features. You can still move things, of course, just using the, the same features beforehand. Scrolling is all still there too. Uh, anything else I've forgotten about this? Nope, that's pretty much all of it. Um, and I'll show you an example of where this is kind of useful. So I'm just going to clear out of this. I'm just going to um, go and paint pro player .nfa. I just notice that whenever I use the NFA extension, it'll automatically use the um, the animation tools. And I've just created this little character here. It's a forefront animation of just a little man walking. There we go. It's really not good. Again, like I say, I'm not an animator or an artist of any sort. But um, you can see here that when we play our animation, we can modify the speed to get that down to a speed that we think is about right. That's probably a bit fast. And there we go. Little running man. And that was just made using exactly the same process that I showed you beforehand, but a bit more carefully. Uh, you can see that, I mean, this is... It can be used to make anything, really, uh, any picture that you can imagine drawing like that. It's going to be slow, it's going to be tedious, because, I mean, the tools, they're slow, and they need work, and this is all very beta and very new, but um, they are there, you know, they're, they're, they're there. It's, it's not going to be a real challenge to do this sort of stuff, and with a bit of time, a bit of practice, you, you can get there, so. Um, that's what I'm seeing for this application. So if you ever wonder, uh, you know, what I, what I like to see coming out of this modification um, and, and where I see particular features going, I can see this... Um, the, these colors and these changes to monitors as being a really big step and, and, and change the way that we really look at how computer photograph works and, and the sort of things that we can do with it. So, yeah. That's um, pretty much it, I think. So, I'm, I do apologize. This is all still very much work in progress and I don't like to do that sort of thing, but I really did want to show off what can be done now um, and, and what we can do, sort of do with it later as well because there's, as I said, there's a lot to talk about here. But um, hopefully, very, very soon, I'm going to be creating an API that allows you to modify these images and then draw them, some collision detection, and then I'm just going to start making a couple of games. And they're going to be fun. Well, if not fun, they'll at least show you what sorts of games you can make. As you can see, this could be a Mario or a Pitfall clone, or it could uh, be Berserk, or it could really be anything you want it to be. With mouse support and with colors, is the only limit really here is your imagination and the size of the screen. That's it for me, I think. Right, um, any questions about this sort of stuff, please feel free to email or ask, because it it's new things, it's fairly important stuff, and it's really exciting. So um, definitely sort of ask about that if you have any questions. Besides that, I... Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, um... Hope you found this interesting. Take it easy. <laughs>